VG Meats is a family business. It's in Haldeman and Norfolk County. This morning we're at uh, the Hillview Farm, which is where my wife and uh, I and my three daughters farm and live. And uh, here we have the mama cows and we also raise chickens and we have a little bit of pork as well that we raise on the farm. The calves uh, are born uh, on the pastures as I mentioned and then from there they'll stay on the grass as long as uh, Mother Nature allows. From there then we bring cattle to, um, to my father's farm which is in Norfolk County and uh, there they're finished on grains and grasses and forages uh, like sorghum sudan grass, hay and straw and, and different forages as well. Uh, I bought a, a farm just down the road here from the butcher shop. We started with feeding cattle and found that the product was much better than we were getting at auction sales. There was such a variety from one farmer to the next bringing their cattle in that we noticed sometimes you'd hit it and sometimes you wouldn't and it made for different qualities of meat. So we decided to raise the calves ourselves. So that's when we started with our own farms, trying to get a more uniform product. This was a great help to meat quality, and uh, we started to find animals that were repeatedly more tender than the ones before. So this, is, this was our train of thought, and this is how we, we advanced the butcher shop. With the pastured poultry, we're creating a full cycle. So uh, the cows graze the pasture first to condition the grass to make it the right height for the, for the chickens. And then we put the chickens over it. And so the chickens enjoy the fresh grass, spreading manure as they go. And then that helps to reinvigorate the grass again. Uh, and so that reinvigoration helps to create more grass for the cows. And so it's sort of an amplifying cycle that we're able to create there where, um, where having two species um, actually creates a situation where one plus one equals three and so there's a symbiosis going on there and we're able actually to raise more food per acre that way as well. So here we are in Norfolk County. This is uh, at our processing plant, uh, and this is where the magic happens. Uh, we first started out here in 1969. Dad, uh, Dad and Grandpa and Grandma. Uh, they started out as a small processing plant, uh, uh, processing cattle for the local farmers. Today we are now a team of 55, both uh, family members and employees. Uh, both on the farm and in our processing plant. We do everything here from uh, beef and pork processing to chicken processing. We have some award-winning products uh, that we enter into the OIMP every single year uh, and we do very well at those competitions. A big thing that makes us different here is uh, we're able to help out the restaurants uh, come up with some different types of cuts that come from either beef or pork. So for example, uh, there are some amazing cuts like your Denver steaks. Uh, your Denver steak is a, it's a beautiful piece out of the shoulder that can be portioned and it can be put onto the plate at a much lower cost than your typical strip loin or your uh, ribeye. Since we've been using the tenderness testing, the traceability and the close relationship with the farmers that we have, it has allowed these offcuts to get into a position that they perform better and better as time goes on. They're getting to be so good that they might rival the strip loin and the ribeye. And for the chefs who are buying these and, and serving these to their patrons, it gives them a point of difference that allows them to find more margin and find more profitability in their menu. Together we're working on, in my mind, uh, it'll be our life's work, but we're gonna work to create the world's best beef and the beginning most important step that we see in the, in the short term is that we gotta have a product that performs well on the plate. The thing that makes us a little bit different here than your typical processing plant is how we grade our meat going to the consumer. We do a thing called tenderness testing. Basically what the tenderness test is, it's no big secret. You can find it if you're into reading academic journals, but it's referred to as the Warner Bratzler Shear Force Test. And we're basically just taking that same, that same 
academic or laboratory type tests and applying it into an industrial type setting. What that does for us is it allows us to identify what beef is going to perform well on the plate and which will not. And this is different than the grading system in that grading is based on the visual assessment of how marbled a steak is itself. Uh, what we're doing is, a, is an objective measure, not only telling the end user or the chef or the, or the butcher how well the steak will perform, but it also allows us to give feedback to our farmers. We, uh, we raise our calves uh, with no added hormones. And so one of the main reasons we do that is because we've actually done research and we found out that uh, adding uh, hormone implants to beef actually can lead to m tenderness issues. I don't know anything about the health reasons of it, but I do know that when we don't use a hormone implant, that cattle are more tender. And that's why we don't use the hormone implant. So we want to raise the, the best, most high quality beef we can. For us, that means that it's tender beef. We can already see that our farmers are in fact making a positive improvement on the quality of beef. We see this as an entire value chain, a continuous improvement type cycle where over the course of time, we will be able to achieve the world's best beef. As the farmer and as the butcher, we're gonna work harder with other farmers. We're gonna work hard with other restaurateurs and, and chefs. We're gonna work harder in our retails to make sure that we are leaders in putting Ontario on the map for the world's best beef.